Hey everybody, it's Lissa. Welcome back to my channel. So I just wanted to do a quick little intro because uh, this video is not originally how I planned this video to go actually. This video that you're seeing was actually going to be just a bonding video between Kevin, Pumpkin, and Spice that went wrong and failed. And I was just gonna upload the video so you guys could see what like failed bonding looks like. And then I started filming a guinea pig vlog because I was supposed to adopt a new guinea pig today. That went sour because Kevin didn't bond with two females today that we met at the rescue. So, so far Kevin has tried to bond with four females and it has gone sour with all of them. I figured instead of making two separate videos for bonding, I would just go ahead and include the bonding with him and Pumpkin and Spice and also the bonding with him and the new females from this morning and also just add a little bit of a vlog into this video. So I just wanted to give a little intro to let you guys know that the beginning of the video starts with me talking about bonding the girls with Kevin and then progressing it will start talking about him bonding with other pigs since the bonding with pumpkin and spice failed So if everything's a little confusing, hopefully this intro kind of makes everything make sense Enjoy. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Lissa. Welcome back to my channel. I am here with Moki and he's here to help me with my intro. But if you are kind of unaware of my situation with my guinea pigs, you might want to go back to a couple past videos where I adopt two new female guinea pigs and you can kind of get an idea of the situation that I'm going through right now. And this is kind of the follow-up video of that video. A couple weeks ago, like two weeks ago, I think, or three weeks ago. So I think like two weekends ago, I got two new female guinea pigs and I attempted to bond them with my single neutered male guinea pig named Kevin and it went very poorly. One of my guinea pigs named Spice, she was so, so, so just against Kevin even being remotely around her. They were fighting constantly. She was irritated the whole time. They drew blood on each other and after they drew blood on each other, I decided to just go ahead and separate them. I built them an enclosure where they can still see each other but they are separated by bars. I've also been doing scent swapping where I'll swap the Heidi homes and stuff like that from one enclosure to the other. And I've also been doing scent swapping where I'll physically put Kevin inside the girl's enclosure and then I'll put the girls inside Kevin's enclosure, keep them in there overnight or for a couple hours and then I'll put them back so they can get each other's smell and they know what each other smells like. And since I have swapped them and since I have put them in that big enclosure that is separated, they have been doing so well um, being separated by the bars. The first couple days, Spice and Kevin would chatter at each other. They would rumble strut at each other. They would like bite at the bars to get at each other. And now they don't do that at all. They both just kind of sit near the bars at each other and they don't try to fight each other through the bars or anything. So I think they've definitely gotten used to each other. And I felt like since the girls are kind of settled in and they're a little bit more comfortable that it is time to try to do the bonding process again, because a lot of you guys told me that for your guinea pigs, it kind of took even weeks to months for the bonding process to happen. And eventually over time, it just worked. So I'm trying not to give up and I want to try again. So what I am planning on doing is building a mutual space enclosure in here in my living room. My cat here, my cats and my dogs are gonna go into my bedroom for a little bit and it's going to be free of cats and dogs and my guinea pigs are going to bond in here in my living room since there are no guinea pig smells in here, nothing that they can be possessive of. And I'm just gonna build like a CNC playpen in here for them to bond. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my CNC squares out. I'm going to build a big thing for them to be able to bond in and we're gonna hopefully try the bonding process. I am pretty nervous, but uh, I, I'm trying to be positive and stay positive. I've gotten a lot of advice from you guys and a lot of advice from professionals and we're just going to see how it works. So let's go ahead and start building the CNC cage.
All right, guys, here's my big bonding area. It, I wish I had more cubes to make it a little bit bigger, but unfortunately, this is the amount of cubes that I had left in storage. I attached their water bottles on different sides of the cage so they don't try to get possessive over one water bottle or anything. They still might, but who knows? And many of you guys told me to only put a big pile of hay and some veggies. Don't put any types of hidey holes or anything that they can get territorial over. Literally just give them a big space with some hay and then let them sort it out. I have my big flannel fleece here that I can use to separate fighting if anything occurs. And we are just going to put Pumpkin and Kevin in here first. I'm gonna let Pumpkin and Kevin kind of hang out for about 30, 20 to 30 minutes. And then after they settle down with each other, then I'm going to put Spice in because Spice and Kevin are the ones that have the issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and go get Kevin and Pumpkin and we're going to put them in here together and see how it goes. Wish me luck. <laughs> Okay guys, so I'm going to be doing a voiceover for the whole bonding process between the three just because it makes it a little bit easier for me because I wasn't doing any talking during the bonding process, I was just watching them. So I started with Kevin and Pumpkin first, as you can see, and they did the normal thing that they always do, they just do some humping. No fights or anything between them, they actually do really well together. Kevin was humping Pumpkin quite a bit, and she was getting a little irritated, but she's a very submissive pig, so she just lets it happen. That's why she's good with Spice as well, because Spice is very dominant. Him and Pumpkin get along really well. She's actually the only pig that I have tried bonding with Kevin that has gone the best. And I wish I could put Kevin and Pumpkin together, but I'm not going to separate Pumpkin from Spice. I just feel like that's just kind of mean and awful to do. So yeah, they get along really well. I put them in together first just so they could do their little hierarchy thing and see how they do. I didn't want to put him and Spice in from the beginning just because... I just, I didn't know how it would go, and I had a lot of people recommend me just put them in first to see how it goes, so that's what I did. Do keep in mind that this footage is hours and hours worth of footage. There's also some parts that I did not film because my SD card would get full or my battery would die and stuff like that, so you're just seeing sped up footage from hours worth of bonding, and this is what you get. There are some fights and stuff with him and Spice that I did not get on camera. But I will try to show you guys, you know, the most stuff that happened, but him and Pumpkin did really well. There was no fights or anything. I let them bond for about 30 minutes and then I went ahead and added Spice.
So here's where I added spice. So I was distracting them a lot with food. One of the number one tips I have if you're trying to bond your guinea pigs is always put food in there because they will get distracted by it and if they're comfortable enough they will eat around each other, especially at the beginning. Kevin and Spice always do pretty well for the first like 30 minutes to an hour. But as you can see from this footage right here, he's already starting to rumble strut at her, even just being near her. And progressively through the hours of bonding, it gets worse and worse and worse. And I didn't get the last fight on footage, but uh, spoiler alert, this failed at the very end because him and Spice just got in a horrible tornado fight. Hair started being pulled and I knew if I put them back together again, they would just draw blood again. This was a complete fail. Once again, I spent like four or five hours during this whole bonding process with them. But I did want to show you what a failed bonding looks like. They're not horrible. There are some pigs that will fight just as soon as they see each other. But it is bad enough where I talked to some friends that own guinea pigs and I also talked to some experts and they agreed that it's just probably not the best to keep them together and to find Kevin a friend. So the main thing that her, him and Spice do is that they go head to head with each other and they start tornadoing. That's the number one sign that you probably shouldn't keep your pigs together. If they're going head to head, as you can see right here, they did the tornado. If they go head to head with no teeth showing, that's completely fine. But as soon as teeth start coming out where they're biting and tornadoing, pulling hair, blood, any of that starts happening, that's when you know that the bonding is probably not going to be the best. There are some people that have had pigs where they draw blood and they still do well, but I personally just don't want to get to the point, as you can see. They're fighting right here. This is also normal, and as you can see, Kevin ran away. If your pigs are doing that and one of your pigs runs away, then that's a good sign. But you'll be able to see right here that the two girls actually start ganging up on Kevin together. And they start going towards him and he feels like he has nowhere to go. And I just felt really bad for him because obviously I don't want to watch him get double teamed by two girls. Like, look how scared he looks. It's so sad. And I know it's kind of like a normal thing. They're trying to establish dominance and everything, but I just don't think that this is a good match. And Spice is just so irritated this entire time. And like I said, I didn't get all of the fights on camera. This was the worst one because they did it under the water bottle. The water bottle actually ended up spilling because I hit it with my blanket while they were fighting. But as you can see, they go head to head like this, rumble strutting. And then they go into like a little tornado like that and that is not a good thing. So that was the last fight I believe I got on camera. And I wanted to show you guys a little bit more footage of them just hanging out. But this ended up being a failed bonding, which is completely fine. I mean, not everything works out. I'm still going to try to get Kevin a friend. As you'll see from later in the video, I did go back to the rescue and try to do some more bondings with him. And those ended up being a fail too, but this is literally just real life of owning guinea pigs. You kind of have to see the fails and you also get to see the positives. But this was a big, big failed video, but at least you get to see some cute footage of my guinea pig. Look, Kevin's like in a little nest. He literally looks like on, on camera, he literally looks like he's sitting in a nest. Because probably hollowed out a little. Yeah. yeah. Okay guys, it's been almost three hours since I started the bonding process with them. And after three hours, they are now all laying down. Kevin made himself a little nest in the hay and then the girls are sleeping over there. It's such a hard situation because it is almost coming 7 p.m. I still have to make dinner and my dogs and cats have been in my bedroom for hours now, which I don't want them to stay in there for hours on end, you know? The guinea pigs have been doing so much better than they were last time that I don't want to put them back in their enclosures and I also don't feel like that they've gotten a well enough where they can all be in an enclosure together yet. So it's like a hard situation. I don't know 
if I should maybe try to keep it going for another 30 minutes or so, even though they're all sleeping, or just put them back in the enclosure and try another day and waste a whole another day. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm like debating on what I should do. As you can see, they're all sleeping. You can barely see Spice because she's literally laying right in the sun. She must really like how the sun feels. And she has a little bit of bell pepper still left on her chin from dinner and then pumpkins laying there. And like I said, Kevin made himself a little safety nest inside of the hay here. Cause I guess that's just where he feels safe and he is out. So I guess they're all just tired. If you could basically tell from the last couple hours of footage that I showed you, basically they, get along when they're not near each other. Kevin and Pumpkin are fine near each other, but if Kevin and Spice get near each other, that's when the fighting happens. They've only tornadoed once. I did get that on camera if you guys were able to see it. They spilled the water bottle because they did it underneath the water bottle. And ever since then, when they get close to each other, they still rumble, strut, and chatter at each other. That's all they have really been doing. I just, I want them to completely stop the chattering and the rumble strutting before I even feel comfortable at all putting them back into the same enclosure. So I'm gonna keep going until like 7 p.m., which is another 30 minutes, see how it goes and see if it gets better. If not, I'll just put them back where they were for the night and maybe try tomorrow another day. We are doing a whole nother adoption vlog, hopefully. So if you guys follow me on social media, I kind of hinted toward this a little bit, but I was scrolling through my local rescue, the same rescue I got pumpkin and spice over here from. It is um, located about an hour away from me and I really love the rescue. I think they're just amazing people. They're so kind and they do all that they can to take care of guinea pigs the best that they can. So from now on, as long as I live in Georgia, I'll probably continue to get guinea pigs from them if I get any more in the future when I have a house. But we're still on a mission to get Kevin a friend. Kevin is behind me. <laughs> I originally got pumpkin and spice over here from the rescue and we tried to bond them at the rescue and it went okay. So I brought them back home, tried to do the bonding again. It failed pretty badly. They drew blood on each other, tornadoing constantly um, with spice over here. You can see her. Uh, her and Kevin hate each other. So I waited a couple weeks, did the method where I sent swapped their enclosures for a couple weeks, and then I did the bonding process again. And that went better, but they still continue to try to draw blood and tornado. And I just personally don't think that these three guinea pigs do well together at all. So I figured I would just keep pumpkin and spice because I'm obsessed with them. They're the sweetest guinea pigs ever. And if a single guinea pig popped up at the rescue, which is rare because the rescue likes to keep them in pairs, then I will contact them and ask them. And the rescue loved Kevin. They seriously think Kevin is like the best guinea pig ever and he is. So when I told them the situation, they actually like that week, I believe, had a single guinea pig come to their rescue. She's a female. Her name is Peppermint, which is a really cute name. She is a red eyed guinea pig and she She's a young girl and she is by herself. Apparently her story is that she was like just from the pet store and someone bought her, couldn't take care of her anymore and dropped her off at the rescue. So she has been alone most of her life. So we're gonna try to bond her and Kevin tomorrow. So I was waiting to get a lot of stuff that I needed to upgrade at these enclosures once again. I'm sure you guys are just tired of me completely changing around this room. I think I've done it probably like eight times now, but we're gonna be switching around this room again. I bought a whole nother table and I also have this little haul beside me that I'm gonna show this video is probably gonna be super long but like my last adoption vlog but you guys really enjoyed it so I'm gonna keep making them if you guys like them and I personally love filming adoption videos and like hauls and rearranging it's just like my absolute favorite so we're gonna do a lot of things in this vlog today to get ready for the adoption hopefully tomorrow I'm really really hoping it works out I've always wanted a red-eyed guinea pig this literally been my dream is to have a red-eyed guinea pig I love red-eyed animals people think that they're scary but I love them I have a red-eyed mouse a red-eyed rat and now hopefully I'll have a red 
red-eyed guinea pig, but we are hoping that her and Kevin get along. And if they do, it's going to be so cute because she is stunning. Kevin's popcorning behind me. So I have been ordering some stuff and I also went to Walmart earlier today. I got some stuff from Amazon to prepare. So as you can see, I have a big haul here of some stuff that I have bought and the guinea pigs can hear it as well. <laughs> so I don't really need to buy too much extra stuff, um, mainly because I just have a lot of extra guinea pig stuff lying around just because I already own five guinea pigs. But I went to Walmart today and I bought an eight foot table. So over here, if you guys are new to my channel, I have a six foot table where two of my boys are on. And I really like the table method because it just, it keeps up the floor space. You have more floor space using a table. So I bought an eight foot table. I'm going to make a two by eight enclosure with that table. And I'm either gonna put mocha and latte in it or the girls, I'm not too sure yet. And then I'm also gonna put an enclosure on the floor. It'll make more sense once everything is done. But I bought a table, it was $80. It was like $75 from Walmart. And that's pretty cheap, honestly. It was more expensive on Amazon. The same exact table and brand, it was a Costco table. It was $70 at Walmart. And yeah, it's not super heavy either. I couldn't personally carry it, but my boyfriend carried it fine, so. So first I'll show you what I got from Amazon. Only a couple things, like I said, I pretty much had most of the stuff that I needed, but I bought another water bottle because every single guinea pig I own has their own water bottle, especially the girls right here, because the girls are very possessive over their things. Um, never really had an issue with mocha and latte being super possessive, but the girls definitely are. So I got another one for the new pig. And then I got another hay bag. I wanted one of the cute hay bags again because I bought some really cute ones for mocha and latte and I wanted to get another one. So this is the one that I got. It's the same brand as the cute fruit ones that I bought in my last adoption video. The holes are a little bit smaller which I'm not a huge fan of but if the guinea pigs put their head in there they wouldn't get stuck. So I got this cute panda one and what I do like about this one is that you can actually use a hook to hook it to the side of the enclosure because I don't know if you can see from Kevin's hay bag here, he likes to pull the hay bag all the way out and he likes to sit underneath it like it's a like a little hidey house. So yeah, I got that one. I just got one just to add to this enclosure. So each guinea pig has their own hay bag. And then lastly, I got something that was actually recommended from the rescue that I got my guinea pigs from. I will try to remember to put a link down below for all of these things, but this is actually a brush for a horse, I believe, when you have to brush horses. I've never owned a horse before, and to be honest, I'm kind of scared of horses, but a lot of people recommend these, and the rescue recommended this to clean the fleece off before you put the fleece in your washing machine to save your washing machine from all of the hay and poop that can get stuck onto the fleece. So I bought this because um, my only issue with washing fleece is that hay gets stuck to it very easily sometimes. So I wanted to try this. You basically just scrape your fleece and all of the mess and the hair and everything should come right off. So I'm gonna try this today when I change all of their enclosures around and we're gonna see how that works. So that's all the stuff that I got from Amazon, just a couple things. I actually ordered some more stuff because I got a $100 Amazon gift card from somebody and I used that full $100 on my animals. So I have a couple more things coming in a couple days. Then from Publix, I got a laundry hamper because when I am cleaning out my guinea pig enclosures. It is really awkward to carry all of the stuff back and forth. So I figured I'd just buy a designated hamper to hold all of my stuff just so I can easily carry it to the laundry room. This was like really cheap. It's just a pop-up hamper. So I have room for that now. So that's why I got that. Oh, I forgot. I also got this from Amazon. As many of you guys can see, I don't know if you can, I like to use bath mats as bedding as well because it is very absorbable because bath mats are obviously for when you get out of the shower, it absorbs the water underneath your feet. So bath mats are a really great way to help with fleece. And I like to double up on bath mats and fleece the most. A lot of people ask me what I recommend other than fleece and bath mats are definitely it. There's a brand on Amazon that I like the most and it is this brand here. Here. I'll try to remember to put it down below. It is the Luxuric, Luxurious? I don't know. It's pretty cheap. It comes in like hundreds of different colors. I was going to get orange for Halloween, but the orange is actually sold out. So I got it in blue. I also have a purple and a pink one. And I usually put this underneath the kitchen area to absorb all of the extra water and pee and poop that they do. And this is really, really thick. It lasts at least a week when I do my deep cleaning. And then at Walmart today, I also found this two pack 
These are a little bit thinner than the ones that I get from Amazon, but these are actually cheaper and it comes in a two pack. So this was a two piece of these textured rugs, as you can see, but these are pretty thin. These would be used kind of just as like a little pee pad or something like that, but this was the same price as one of the Amazon ones. So you get a two for one deal, but they're not as good quality. But if you go to like Walmart or the Dollar Tree, the Dollar Tree even has these bath mats. So you could try that as well. Then from Chewy, I just got another food bowl. It was $2 <laughs> just for the new guinea pig. I bought some cuter ones on Amazon, but they never actually shipped out. And then my order got canceled, which was weird. So I just got one of these in a random color. It ended up coming in blue. And then from Walmart, I got some more fleece because I have a whole Joann's order that was supposed to be delivered yesterday. And then it was also supposed to be delivered today, but it wasn't delivered in time for the post office to close. So now I have no idea when my Joann's order is coming. And I ordered like five different fabrics that I'm waiting on. I found this fabric at Walmart. It's one and a half yards of anti-pill fleece, which is the fleece that I use to make liners and pee pads. So I just got these two. I don't normally go for neutral colors like grays and beiges and stuff, just because you guys know I'm a very colorful person. I either like really dark, spooky, Halloween stuff or really bright rainbow aesthetic stuff, which is what I typically like to go for in here. So I don't normally choose gray, but this fabric really called to me. I thought it just was really cute. And I think it's just because of the stars and everything. So I need to wash these. I need to wash all of my fleeces. And then lastly, Walmart had these really pretty Halloween fall flowers, but I'm actually gonna use this for Bowser's enclosure. And that's gonna be a future video. Stay tuned for that. I am revamping Bowser's entire enclosure to kind of look like a little apartment. It's gonna be really cute. And this is going to be in here because his name is Bowser. And doesn't this give you like Bowser castle vibes? It does to me, so. So that's my haul. It is Saturday, which is normally the day I do my full deep clean of all of the guinea pig enclosures. So I'm going to go ahead and just break apart everything and put the table in here. And we are gonna completely revamp this room again. I'm gonna try to give you guys kind of an idea of what I'm doing. So it's kind of a mess because I just did the haul that you saw, but this whole enclosure right here, this is about seven feet and the table is eight feet. So it'll just take up a little bit more room. The table is gonna go against this wall and I'm going to put a eight foot enclosure on the table. And then underneath the table, kind of like this one is where Kevin and his new friend are gonna go. So it's just gonna be like a big area, but all of this floor space is gonna be free. I'll be able to open my closet. It's gonna be really nice. I'm probably gonna put mocha and latte in the eight foot enclosure just because boys are more territorial than girls. And they don't fight with each other. The only time they ever fight is over their water bottles. So I don't think it's going to be an issue putting them in a smaller enclosure. Here is the eight foot table that I bought. Like I said, I got it at Walmart. It is huge and heavy, but I'm gonna let it sit in my hallway for a little bit while we start prepping for it.
I just finished this room. Sorry for like the bad lighting. Maybe let me turn it this way for right now. Um, I just finished the room. It took me five hours to do everything, but I have never been so proud and so happy of this room until now. I have my whole floor space back. I'm able to fully open the closet. So in the future, I'm gonna completely organize that closet and start hanging up my fleeces in there. So let me turn around the camera and show you what everything looks like. All right, so as you can see, I am standing at the door now with the tripod and this is what it looks like. So if you go a little over to the right, you can see the girls there. So at the top, I have mocha and latte in a two by eight. Yeah, two by eight enclosure. It's huge. Um, the boys seem so happy with it. I wish I got it on camera earlier. Mocha and Latte were literally popcorning and running around in circles like 10 times. It was so cute and they seem really happy up there. Kevin and hopefully his new friend will be down below in a three by six. I will buy some bright lights to go underneath the table just so they feel, you know, a little bit like the other pigs are where they're kind of out in the light and I've noticed that the pigs seem happier when they're out in the light and the guinea pigs up there are humping each other. I love that. Then over here we have the girls. It is kind of hard to see because the window is right by them so that backlight's kind of bad right now but I did put the girls in the 2x5 cavi cage. It looks incredible. Um, the girls seem very, very happy in there. I think they really like being near the window because they were both like splaying out their bodies by the window. It was really cute. I do not keep it fully open. I actually, I have it closed right now, but when I do keep it open, it's not where the sun can directly hit them so they won't get too hot or anything. But I noticed that the pigs really enjoy being by the window and they haven't seemed to have any territorial issues or anything like that in here. They seem to be completely happy if anything, um, as you can see, Mocha and Latte are the ones that are trying to establish territory. They've been doing it since I put them in here. Mocha will not stop humping him. And it's kind of funny because Latte used to be the dominant one and now Mocha is the dominant one. As you can see, he's the one doing all the humping 24 seven. So that's why I put the boys in the bigger enclosure because male guinea pigs are known to be more territorial and more aggressive towards each other if they don't have more space. So I wanted to give them the most space possible and that's why I put them in the biggest enclosure if any of you guys are wondering. And I'm just, I'm literally so happy with this. Kevin is probably hiding in his hidey or under the bed, but his new friend will go in there with him. There he is. <laughs> I did have it out one more square where it was gonna be like a four by six, but I just felt like it came out too far and I was having trouble opening the closet door. So this just fits perfectly underneath the table. As you can see, all of my floor space is available here like I literally have so much room to just stand. I'm actually about to take my crested gecko out of this room and put him in my bedroom so the rats are going to be scooted over a little bit so there's going to be a little bit of extra room in here and I'm also about to do a bearded dragon makeover as well so this whole area is going to change too but that'll be a future video. So I'm going to go ahead and chill out and relax for a couple hours since I've just been non-stop doing things for the past couple hours. I'm going to make dinner and then tonight before bed I'm going to prep for the morning. I do have to be at the rescue at 10 in the morning and it is an hour away so I do have to wake up pretty early. So I will prep for the new pig, set up the carriers and everything tonight and then we will head to the rescue in the morning. I will film the bonding process between Kevin and Peppermint. Hopefully it goes well. I'm really trying to stay positive but since I had such a negative bonding experience with pumpkin and spice and Kevin. I just, I'm trying to be positive, but I'm having a really hard time with it. My boyfriend said the same thing. He was like, I want to be happy for tomorrow, but I just feel like I don't have hope anymore. And I literally feel exactly the same way. But many of you guys told me that it took you over a year to find a partner for your guinea pig. So I'm trying to, you know, keep hope. I don't know if you can hear them chattering in the background, but Mocha and Latte are having a lot of territorial issues right now. I guess it's just because I put them in a bigger space. They're trying to you know, tell each other who's the most dominant one and what's their space and everything like that. But I'm gonna watch them for a little bit, make sure they don't start fighting because I've never actually seen them act like this before. It's actually very strange. I've never seen them be so aggressive with each other, which is really weird, but I'm gonna go make dinner and I'll update you guys in a little bit. I hope you like the room. I am very proud of it. I love this room so much. So these past couple hours have been kind of strange. Um, since I last updated you, it's been like two hours. I had to separate mocha and latte. I had to put a grid in between. So they're now in a two by four each. They would not stop aggressively fighting each other, like tornadoing. They didn't draw blood on each other, but they were going like head to head at each other, pulling each other's hair out, like really aggressively fighting each 
each other and they would not stop. I needed to go make dinner and everything. So I went ahead and separated it in the middle and they're still going towards the cage and like chattering as you can see. Like they're still talking to each other and like sniffing each other, but they'll start rumble strutting and yeah, I separated them. I've, they've been together since they were born. I've never had any issues with them. They've never gotten aggressive with each other. And I'm thinking it's because I used the grids that were used with the females. Out of my stupidity, don't do what I did. Make sure to wipe down all of your grids with cleaning solution before using them for another enclosure. I honestly just was not thinking about it at all. And the female smell is probably still on the grids and that's probably why mocha and latte started fighting each other because they could smell the girls i wiped down all of the grids with cleaning solution and i'm hoping after tonight everything will calm down they'll start to get the smells back of themselves again and i'll open it back up and see how they do but they were just being way too aggressive and i do not feel comfortable leaving this room knowing that they were out in the open like that and they could still fight the reality of owning male guinea pigs females can do it too but it's more common with male guinea pigs pigs is that in, like all of a sudden one day they just start fighting each other if they smell something different if they smell a female literally anything different the males can just start fighting each other so i am exhausted physically and mentally like i can't deal with this right now i need to go lay down because i have been in this room all day long working on everything and i mentally and physically cannot handle dealing with a bonding process right now. It's okay to take a step back and let your guinea pigs be alone for a little while. There is nothing wrong with that. It is not selfish. So <laughs> Kevin is itching down there. I am going to go lay down and I'm gonna go eat dinner and I'm gonna have a relaxing rest of my night without being stressed out from this. <laughs> It is Sunday, so it's the morning that we are going to go try to bond Kevin with the new guinea pig. Sorry if it's a little loud, we're on the highway, but we are on the way there. And I will try to film a little bit at the rescue just to show the bonding process. Hopefully it goes well. If it doesn't, then obviously this video is going to be a little bit different than we originally planned. But yeah, I have Kevin underneath me right now.
Okay, so I got back from the rescue uh, this morning. It's already 6 p.m. in the afternoon. I got back at around 12 this evening. And as you guys might have saw, um, kind of not really, but the bonding with the new pigs at the rescue today was a fail. As you saw from the footage, Kevin first did a whole bonding process with that first guinea pig that you saw, the really light colored one with the red eyes. Her name was Peppermint. She was about a year old and we started bonding him with her and it went sour pretty much immediately. She is a very, very, very dominant piggy and Kevin is a very, very dominant piggy as well. That's why he's not being able to find anyone to bond with because Kevin just won't back down to anybody. We tried to bond him with peppermint and that went sour like I said pretty fast and we gave up on that and they also had another pig lined up for Kevin that they had that was alone named Cookie. Now Cookie was adorable. I don't know if you guys saw the footage. She had a beautiful coloring. She was very sweet. Both of the pigs were incredibly sweet. Cookie was like recently cleared to be able to be adopted out like yesterday so they went ahead and brought her over. Now the bonding between Cookie and Kevin was a lot more successful than it was with peppermint. Uh, Cookie was more of a submissive pig so at first it actually did pretty well. Kevin was being really dominant with her and she was allowing it to happen but after about 30 minutes I think she was just getting tired of it and then they started like hitting each other with each other's mouths and not necessarily biting each other yet but they kept doing it non-stop no matter how close they'd get to each other and then near the end they tornadoed multiple times and I agreed with the rescue that I just didn't think that they would be a good match. So unfortunately I did not get to adopt a new guinea pig today but that is the reality of owning guinea pigs and trying to bond them. Sometimes you have to go through multiple bonding processes before you can find the successful pig. Luckily for me, I do have a rescue that is willing to help me with that. I know some people don't have that opportunity to be able to do that, but I'm very lucky that this rescue is helping me with finding a friend for Kevin. So they told me that they actually brought out the little babies. They had some three-week-old little baby guinea pigs. Um, I think two of them were males and one was a female baby. They were literally so tiny. They were literally as tiny as when I got my boys. Probably my boys were a little bit bigger when I got them. They were about three or four weeks old and they're just keeping them until they're about six weeks old and then they're going to adopt out the babies. So they told me that we can schedule a meeting for the babies in a couple weeks. So I will be going back to the rescue in a couple weeks and hopefully adopting one of the babies. A lot of people have been recommending to do the route of trying with a baby because babies don't really know anything other than just being a baby so it would be really easy for a baby to bond with Kevin. Um, the only issue would be like as the baby gets older and hits the teenage spurts and everything we'll see how that goes. I did tell the rescue that I don't care if it's a male or female baby. I don't care at this point. Um, I did get him neutered to go with a female, but if it ends up being another male, it's honestly not a big deal to me. So yeah, in a couple weeks, I will be going back to the rescue. There will be another video for that, hopefully being an adoption vlog again. Like I said, this video was kind of confusing. It was all over the place, but I wanted to give you guys a guinea pig vlog. I'm just gonna literally name this a vlog where a bunch of stuff happens. Bonding, rearranging my pet room, trying to adopt new guinea pigs. Literally so much stuff happened in this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the support on Instagram that you've been giving to Kevin. Unfortunately, honestly, he just seems pretty happy and content right now. He's so, like, honestly, I hate to say it, but he seems happier alone than he does with pigs. Like, he's, he's always so stressed out around other guinea pigs. It's so weird. He always just seems really, like, scared and anxious around other pigs. So it's, it's really stressful for me as the owner to watch him be so, like, scared all the time when he's around other pigs. So eventually it'll work out. If it doesn't work out, maybe Kevin is just meant to be alone. He is the king of his castle, and that is fine with me honestly I at least I can say I tried I also wanted to mention as you can see up above mocha and latte are back to their normal selves I think just using the old bars from the girls enclosure and maybe them being able to smell the girls a little bit more really just hyped them up for a couple hours and they just really had to take it out on each other um, it's completely my fault I should have wiped the bars down beforehand but I didn't so do keep that in mind if you ever have to switch bars for different enclosures make sure to clean them dumb mistake that I made and and after I separated the enclosure for a couple hours and came back later that night and opened up the bars, they were completely back to normal, acting their normal ways, and they're 
completely mocha and latte again, just doing a little bit of strutting and chattering at each other that they've done their entire lives. So I was watching them very carefully. I was watching them on the pet camera for hours last night and they, they were acting completely fine. I'm happy about that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out my social medias down below to keep updated with my animals. On my Instagram, I update you guys on what's going on with like adoptions and just little things that I do in my pet room. I hope you guys enjoy this new layout that I have. I'm very proud of it. Um, I think it looks amazing. I'm, I'm literally just so happy with it. Love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>